All right. So, so Henry, I was I was telling Lucretia that I, I want to talk about the the uh, pandemic sort of effect on people's faith in democracy and what you um, kind yeah. of takeaways are on it right now, um, and then hop off the Zoom call and then just for a couple of minutes speak about the other the other story yeah. that we talked yeah. about. Okay. Um, okay. So so I'll I'll set the stage here. Real quick, you know, according to Pew Research, you know, the percentage of, percentage of Americans who say they trust the federal government at least most of the time has been below 30% for like the last three presidencies. Um, so going into the pandemic, you know, we were already seeing pretty yeah. low levels of, of trust in the federal government. And, you know, as of last week, that rating fell to about 20%, according to Pew. In, in your view, like, what is the pandemic and the response to it at all levels of government? Mm. Uh, doing to public trust in government? Well, like, like so many other aspects of when people poll faith in government, faith in levels, I think uh, what we're seeing at the late local level has actually enhanced faith in government. Um, I think that uh, uh, Mayor uh, Nuremberg and County Judge Wolf have done such a good job of keeping people informed uh, that uh, they've actually strengthened faith in the local government. Uh, I, I think even, and it actually goes beyond just keeping people informed, it's, it's also their personas. Uh, I think the mayor has conveyed a very sober, straightforward, serious, uh, no-nonsense uh, um, approach and I think that is that is uh, um, been very good I've teased the judge that he's uh, uh, San Antonio's favorite grandfather or uncle depending on your age uh, and and uh, has conveyed that sense of assurance that comes from someone who's been there for a long time making good judgments and uh, sometimes in a folksy way and uh, the, the long and short is I think San Antonians are quite pleased. And I think the polls would reflect, I haven't seen any particularly, uh, but there's been some polling associated with these propositions and, and, and the mayor, the mayor's numbers are decidedly up from last year, uh, even, even last year's election. Uh, and, and, and the, the, the truth of the matter is he's, he's conducted himself uh, in, in, with, with, with strong leadership uh, during the pandemic. Um, at the state level, um, as for, the, for the longest time, Texas didn't seem to be affected and people uh, looked at the other parts of the country and tended to, to say the negative things that they do uh, about uh, New York and about California. But uh, it was just a short time before the pandemic came here in uh, May and June and, and July with a, with a vengeance. And uh, uh, while the governor's uh, role traditionally, Governor Abbott uh, has been uh, a, a person who's uh, respected and mainstream and thought of as reflecting strong leadership. I think there was some, uh, some that, that was shaken a bit by the off and on uh, posture. But in the final analysis, I think the governor did what needed to be done, despite some of the stranger voices in Texas urging no masks and, and no restrictions. Uh, the governor did some subtle, subtle uh, work, um, basically allowing communities to do what they needed to do, uh, even though, uh, uh, you know, touting a, 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 a line that was um, not encouraging of masks and so forth, but he, he, I think he understood. And in the final analysis, again, I think he's back to a position where people say he showed leadership. The national administration, on the other hand, has been so off and on on so many things. I've never seen a list, but if you were to make a list, of all the things that have been said and then contravened or, uh, uh, or reversed, uh, it, it would be stunning 
from uh, this is going to go away quickly, it's going to disappear uh, miraculously, uh, to uh, masks are, 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 are a hindrance, uh, to uh, there'll be a vacation, a vaccine around the corner, to um, it's not the federal government's role to be a clerk and get uh, protective equipment out to communities, to um, uh, uh, suggesting that that um, that the, that the administration has no responsibilities in this arena at all. Um, it's just been you can't imagine, almost can't imagine, a worse set of declarations and reversals and confusion than what we've seen at the federal level. So, time and again over the years polls show that people don't think much of the federal government, speak negatively of the Congress, but tend to speak positively of their local governments. And I think we're seeing precisely that same pattern in this case. Do you, I, I want to talk about the, the, the local aspect a bit. You know, obviously, you know, over the past several months, we've seen, you know, Metro Health had its own sort of halting response, you know, it yeah. was, in April or May, it was recommended that they hire a certain amount of contact tracers, for example. Uh, they didn't reach that number in time to yeah. to deal with the, the summer spike. You saw them sort of uh, really grappling with that. And, and, and then you saw sort of the, the summer surge and how they, uh, you know, were sort of struggling to, to deal with that. You know, at the same time, and this kind of straddles state and local, uh, you know, there remain discrepancies between the number of deaths that Metro Health reports and the number of uh, mm -hmm. deaths that the state reports in Bear County, for example. How do you see residents responding to that? I mean, if, if you know, the mayor is projecting a certain sort of calm and sort of leadership, how do they respond to? Yeah, a good sort question. Of the, the, I, the, um, I have not, I have not seen those issues, and there have been issues, uh, uh, detract from the mayor and the judge's leadership or the general faith in the local government. Uh, uh, there, there have been issues. The, 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 the way that we saw a, a disproportionate number of cases in nursing homes, for example, um, the issues of the resignation of the health director, uh, the um, shock at uh, seeing uh, the lines at the food bank, uh, which made national and global press out of San Antonio. Um, the um, I, I can't put at their feet the the, the discrepancies on the uh, accounting methods. I, I'm not, I, that, that's a technical thing, and I'm not sure people, you know, kind of thought that was a major problem at all. It just needs to be worked through. Definitional problem, um, but there's certainly have been. I mean, something like this is beyond experience. It has no precedent. It is uh, massive in scale, touches every life, and it deals with life or death. I've not seen an angry response in San Antonio. Uh, now, there was at the outset, I think, uh, some real concern on the part of small business uh, with the lockdowns, uh, because uh, particularly eating establishments, restaurants, felt that they were, um, that this was just impossible. It shouldn't be done. It's never been done. And, and, and the situation didn't warrant it. Um, and some businesses are going to go out of business, including some major firms, as we know, Luby's uh, and others that were right on the brink and the PPP saved them. Uh, but that can only go on for so long. Uh, I suspect they're probably landlords who have people who they would evict under normal circumstances for not paying the rent or for other violations that they can't under these circumstances. And that is a real blow to business. So you would think that, that, that people would be, you know, just, just uh, livid and they may be, but I don't see it being reflected in a general, uh, 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 diminishment of support for the steps that the local governments had had to take. This has been an incredibly tumultuous time with the uh, George Floyd 
related civil disturbances at the same time. And I contend that those things are related. There was George Floyd, of course, but there's also a lot of frustration related to the pandemic and a lot of fear. And I think it helped stimulate that sense of, of, of crisis and anger and, and need to, to uh, protest. Um, I, 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 I said at the time that I, I couldn't imagine being a college graduate this year trying to go into the job market when companies are closing and companies are uh, shutting down uh, and all of that uh, investment and in education plus student debt plus great hopes crushed um, uh, again really profound life impacts and yet I think people have been very reasonable in San Antonio understanding what needs to be done and largely I think uh, have have uh, complied, uh, have largely complied. Um, so I, I see a lot of cooperation on masks here, unlike other parts of the country, and um, uh, and, and 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 there are businesses that have either decided, look, even though this is existential for them, there's not much they can do about it, and they've 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 gone on with their lives. Um, so this thing has been a, a serious body blow to our community. And, um, but in San Antonio, at least, uh, the general level of compliance has been good. The damage has been, I think, um, in, in the mid range of what cities are, in, are in, uh, experiencing across the country. Um, and I do not see uh, and I'm in the community a lot, you know, I, I was at, at church yesterday and they asked me to say a word about a, a cop's accountability session that's coming up. And people were very interested in knowing more about this election and more about the choices. Uh, it, it, I, I did not detect anger. I detected a sense of wanting to participate in basic decisions ref, uh, uh, re affecting their lives. Yeah, because I, I wonder, because we're obviously, and you mentioned a, a good chunk of this already, but I mean, we're, we are living through a fairly tumultuous time. You know, there, yeah. you know there's real talk on, on both sides of the aisle about like what happens if, uh, you know, we have a contested presidential election. What does mm -hmm. that do? Mm -hmm. um, and, and there seems to be sort of like a lot of angst over, over sort of, you know, basically the future of the democracy. Yeah. Right now, um, well, but, but I, I, you know, I think I think there is some 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 angst in a in a, in an abstract way that that is in the in the larger public discourse. Okay, but I think for most individuals, people have not given up on our democracy, our government, uh, our leaders and are still hopeful. There may be some suspension of disbelief, like I cannot believe this is happening. I can't believe we're discussing these things. I can't believe we're talking about an election that where the president wouldn't leave or, or, or a, a party trying to pack the Supreme Court or you know, other things that you read about from history or in other countries, but are not the way we do things in the United States. Uh, and so I, um, uh, I, 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 I don't think that most people are yet at the point of believing that a, a constitutional crisis is in front of us. They're still believing this can be worked out. They're still believing that calmer heads will prevail. That's my sense. Further, I would say that's particularly true in San Antonio. For some reason associated perhaps with our experience with uh, 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 negotiating conflict, uh, creating consensus. Maybe, maybe it's part of our multicultural accommodation, but San Antonians uh, don't seem to be hatefully, uh, contentiously responding to this situation. I think for most San Antonians, yes, they're concerned, but it's still in the range of uh, 
let's act positively positively to 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 get things on the right track that's what i believe Sorry, my cat is is making some noise over here. So I'm trying to <laughs> keep okay. myself muted as much as possible. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the you said something I, I felt was interesting, and I and I guess makes a, obviously makes a, a certain amount of sense is that people are are losing trust in you know the federal government. Well, you've, seen, you've seen a lot of polling that shows that right. but, generically over the years. Right, but I mean, in, in terms of the contrast between, you know, the the lack of trust in, in in federal government and the increased trust in in local government, in your view, like, what is that ultimately? What is that con? How does that contrast sort of play out over mm -hmm. you know the next couple of years? Like, does uh, do people become more involved in in local elections? Do they become more active? in in local governance as a result of the pandemic or you know do we just do we tend to see the same sort of uh, well let me let me try to let me let me let me answer it by 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 just sort of imagining responses that people might have so you talk about the federal government and people's response would be a plague on both their houses uh, 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 there's a there's a complete stalemate and breakdown in the processes of the federal government. Uh, it is uh, uh, a kind of a, 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 a the, the the responses are useless. They're not helpful. In fact, they are negative and hurting. Uh, um, um, and um, the Congress is is. Uh, a big part of the problem. Um, the president, they've never seen anything like it. So those would be kind of responses I would, I, I would expect to hear when talking about the federal government. Now, in contrast, what would you hear if you talked about local government? They'd say, well, um, I can see they're trying. Uh, they've been dealt a severe blow, but their responses have been uh, responsible, whether it's uh, on policing matters or whether it's uh, trying to sustain a transportation system or whether it's uh, responding with uh, economic development and training funds to try to get the economy restarted and get people the skills they need to participate in better jobs, uh, whether it's uh, the co cooperation with relief measures so that people do not get evicted, so that they have food to eat, um, uh, so that uh, there's, uh, you know, a good health care response. I think that's what you would hear. You would hear people are trying. Uh, uh, there's people of goodwill in charge, not just the mayor and the county judge, but at the hospital district, uh, in the schools, et cetera. Uh, so I think there's a pretty, pretty, pretty big difference. Now, how does it reflect itself in how people act? Um, I don't know that people will become more involved in their local government, but I think people will become more convinced that most of the solutions to the societal problems we confront are better solved at the local level and that the federal government frequently acts like a useless appendage to our to our to our our system of government and and uh, so I, I, that that's my sense and something else i was i was looking at you know kind of parallel with just you know broad sort of opinions um, you know gauging people's sort of faith in, in the federal government is that you see uh, you know, about 50% uh, of people's, um, you know, polled by Pew say, or it was at least 50% say that um, they don't, they don't trust the federal government to, to help in a, in a sort of, or to properly handle something like a public health crisis. And, you know, last week, uh, you know, there were a couple of polls that came out from the Kaiser Foundation, uh, the COVID-19 consortium, um, they both had polls out last week that say there's declining trust in the CDC. So like, you, 
I, I wonder like whether, you know, I mean, it, it does seem like we're seeing sort of decline in, in, in faith in, in both, you know, institutions that are, that are, you know, sort of purely political mm-hmm. and then ones that are, that are having to manage sort of a, a public health response. Right, I think you're absolutely you think, right. I think, I wonder what I think, you think the overall effect of that is. No, I think you're right. And I think that the, um, the uh, behavior by the political actors has damaged the institutions that are supposed to be neutral arbiters and service providers uh, in a, in a uh, nonpartisan way. So people do doubt the CDC because they have uh, been forced to tailor their uh, recommendations uh, to the White House, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's tragic because our society needs certain institutions to just function in an efficient way. The post office. People were questioning whether the post office was purposely delaying, uh, letting, letting, closing uh, uh, stations and boxes uh, to uh, make it harder for people to vote. Well, that's a, just a horrible, horrible outcome if that's the impression that people are left with about the functioning of the post office, right? So you have the post office, you have the CDC, you have uh, the voting process, uh, all the voting and electoral uh, machinery um, uh, beyond the CDC, other aspects of medical advice from the administration, from the government, from the Department of Health and Human Services. You could go on and on. And all of these institutions that are supposed to be on these kinds of matters, neutral arbiters, providers of, of balanced information, uh, uh, and then and acting without, and they're supposed to be acting without favoritism toward a political side or toward a, a, a population, a portion of the population. I mean, can you imagine, can you imagine what people's faith will be if there is a limited number of vaccines and they have to be apportioned on some basis as to whether people will trust that that apportionment is going to the most needy, to the elderly, to the frail, to the infected, to the to the to the frontline workers, or whether it matters who you know and how much money you have, whether you can uh, cajole your way into getting a vaccine. That's the effect. That would be the the worst effect, uh, because you'd be choosing uh, life or death related treatment to some people, and not for others, depending on their either economic circumstances or political connections. And that, that, that's the kind of tragedy that can come from uh, the loss of faith in institutions. And, and I wonder what you, what you think uh, is the likely sort of long-term effect of all this. I mean, you're seeing so many shocks to the system right now. I mean, you're seeing a, a, you know, the president you know, basically out ahead of the election sowing mistrust yeah. in in sort of the polling process you have his attorney general doing the same thing uh you have obviously everything that was going on with the u.s postal service you have everything that was going on with yeah uh you know i mean the 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 cdc and the pandemic's response i mean what 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 do you think will be sort of the long-term implications on on like how people view well i I, I think it depends on how long it goes I have I have observed over the years that leadership can make a dramatic difference and move the needle more than you think it would just because we have a change in a few positions. But I have witnessed where the leader's articulation of ideals, of duty, uh, of, of, of expectations can actually move people toward that position. And, and quickly make changes. If, for example, a new administration were to replace people in key positions in these institutions I'm describing, and they were to declare at the outset that their first priority is um, nonpartisan, uh, fair, uh, effective administration, and nothing else, uh, 
that would be a very, very different world than continuing the erosion of those institutions over time. Now, if on the other hand, we were not able in the short order to get these things turned around, um, then the damage can be very severe. Uh, because I've said to myself over the years, there is no guarantee that a nation that is great and, and a leader in the world, prosperous and respected, must stay that way. There's no guarantees. You have to sort of have to re-earn those outcomes continuously. And, 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 and just like every other great force in the world, there comes a, a, a turning point when, the, when, when, when it just slips away. And, and we're operating as if we have a guarantee that the United States is going to stay strong and no other nation is going to step into the vacuum that is being created by our contentiousness internally and by the lack of respect on the world scene. This could be one of those turning points. This could be a point of inflection from which we do not return. I don't want to sound overly alarmist, but that is, that is possible in, in a situation this, this dire. When you're losing respect for the institutions, when they're not functioning correctly, when we're facing fiscal implications, when we have economic problems, when, when there's vacuums in our leadership in the world that nations like China are stepping into and Russia is playing a role in just mischief, um, when um, we, we uh, are, are, are unable to, to forge anything that resembles unity or consent, consensus among the people of the country, everybody's motives are questioned. You put all of that together, just wrap it all up together. It's a witch's brew of conflict that at some point, at some point, we look back and say, that was the point of inflection. That's when it started down. And, 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 and you can get into a spiral where, where you, can't, uh, you can't recover. Climate change is another aspect of this. You know, people doubting the steps we need to take. The climate's not waiting us on us to, uh, to, 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 uh, to spiral downward into a serious problem. So these are all instances of where really the, 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 there's nothing in world history that guarantees a, a permanent role as leader of the world for the United States if we squander it, if we piss it away uh, with more of, of this kind of thing. All right. Well, Henry, I think I think I'm going to leave it there for this and and.